CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. As Mr. Dickens once said, there are strings in the human heart that had better not be vibrated. And so there are also passageways in the human brain that had best not be explored. If it's true that we're all riding on a train that is headed for eternity, why hurry the engineer? Your Majesty, I shall transform these men into the smartest regiment in the army. These men, Colonel? These scrofair-looking villains? Yes, Your Majesty. That one. Mark him. The tall, thin one lounging under the tree. You make him into a soldier? He shall be our benchmark. From this dirt, this miserable clay, I shall mold the most magnificent soldier in the army of France, even if it kills me. Mystery drama, Sleeping Dogs, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Russell Horton. Radio Mystery Theater is brought to you in part by Pinnacle Books and will continue in a moment. Some people achieve immortality in a sort of left-handed way. They themselves are completely forgotten, but their names will always be remembered. For instance, when you admire a fuchsia plant, do you ever think of the man who developed it some 400 years ago, Leonard Fuchs? When you wear your cardigan sweater, are you aware or do you care that it's named after the 7th Earl of Cardigan? Our story is concerned with Lieutenant Colonel Jean Martinet a legendary drill master in France. But before we meet this fine gentleman, we must pause at a rude and tiny hut made of mud, logs, and thatch. This miserable hovel is the home of a desperately poor peasant named Etienne, who, with his wife, is eating his bowl of soup. You're so tired, Etienne. No, no. I'm all right. But when you finish eating... Will you still have to go to Farmer Pico's field and do the plowing? Mm. He promised me a calf. Oh, so much work for a calf. Let us thank the Lord. For what? That I'm young enough and strong enough to do it. No. It isn't right. It isn't right. No, no. What's this? We're dogs. Western dogs. That's what we are. Oh, no, Jeanette. Jeanette. I don't even have a name. You don't even have a name. Well, of course I do. My name is Etienne. It was your father's name. And your grandfather's name. And because I'm your wife, they call me Tianette. It's the will of the Lord. We must accept it. I don't want to accept it. You must. But I don't have to like it. Oh, my dearest little wife. I know it's hard. We're nothing. We're nobody. We freeze in the winter, we suffocate in the summer, and we starve all the year round. If I could only teach you to... to... Teach me to what? The king lives in a palace. The lord of the manor lives in a castle. Are they any happier than we? Does the king or the count love his wife more than I love you? Please. The lord gives, and the lord takes. What has he ever given us? Each other. Oh, each other soup. The rich, the great. They are so busy with their games, their jewels, their politics. But what do I hear? What do I see? Do they know the song of one bird from another? It has no taste when it's cold. They must buy their beauty from painters, from poets, from musicians. It doesn't have much taste when it's hot either. But at least you don't notice it. But we, we get our beauty at first hand from nature herself just by opening the door. Come. 
Where? Outside. I don't want to go outside. Come, come, look. I'll show you something. I said I don't want to go outside. But you must. Now, just, let go just, of my just, hand. Just, just for a moment. Here. Let's step out the door. Look. Ah, oh, and listen. The birds. The sky. The trees. The flowers. I can. Does it matter how rich? I can. Listen. To what? Look. Uh, there's a man on horseback. Soldiers. Is there a war? There's always a war. But we would have heard about it. We better run. Too late. They, they see us. We are in God's hands. Well, now, according to the rules of the manor, this one should be Etienne. Is that your name? Uh, yes, yes, my name is Etienne. You're to come with us. But what did I do? What did you do? You were born, isn't that enough? Where are you taking me? You're to be a soldier. A soldier? But I, I, a I'm a... A soldier in King Louis XIV's own royal regiment of foot. But I, I don't want to be a soldier. Who does? Please, Sergeant, you can't take him. Why not? He can't go away and leave me all alone. Well, a pretty little wench like you, you won't be alone long. I have the lord of the manor when such a blind, sick old man... You wouldn't be alone at all. Sergeant, please. <laughs> oh, what's this? Sergeant, please. My name is Sergeant Escargot. There's no way out of it. You have to come with us. But what about her? Take her along. Take her along? She can be a camp follower. But what are you saying? She can cook your meals and wash and mend your clothes and keep you warm at night and take care of you when you're sick or wounded. Who else is going to do it? Yes, but she... Listen, Etienne, whatever your name is, it's good enough for my wife. But, but she can get killed. Anybody can get killed. Anywhere, anytime, and for any reason. But what if I get killed? Oh, don't worry. She'll find somebody else. <laughs> Jean. Ah, yes, my darling. It's Jean. And you're back from Paris. So soon. Yes, my dearest. I'm back from Paris. And how did matters go? Splendidly, my treasure. Splendidly. And you made all the arrangements? Of course. When am I to report for duty? For duty? But to Her Majesty. Oh. Oh, yes. Jean, is something wrong? Now, why do you say that? Well, it seems to me... Now, darling, you must permit me to explain. Jean Martinet, you did get me the appointment. The appointment? Isn't that why you went to Paris? There was a vacancy in Her Majesty's household, and you were to buy me a place as a lady-in-waiting. Yes, yes, Nicole, my dear, I know all about it. And I gave you 500 livres? Well, of course you did. Well, for a moment I was... Beginning to doubt my sanity or yours. So then, I ask you again when am I to take up my duties? Nicole, let us have a glass of wine. It's been such a long, hot, dusty trip. Did you or did you not? Now, my dear, I did what I considered to be the wisest thing for us both. And what does that mean? I decided not to buy you the post. You decide? But we had both agreed... Let us ring the bell for Marie. I'm almost dead with thirst. Now, Jean... Let me explain. As soon as I arrived at court, I was very quick to appraise the exact situation. What exact situation? Um, the one that exists between the king and the queen. Uh, come in, Marie. Some wine for your mistress and me. What situation? What is the point? in being a lady-in-waiting to Marie-Thérèse. If Marie-Thérèse herself is nobody and nothing at court. How can she be nobody and nothing? She is the queen. But the king never sees her. The king is infatuated with, is obsessed by his latest mistress, Madame de Verrailles. 
They are together day and night. But Marie Therese is still the queen. A neglected queen. A forgotten queen. Of what use is it to be one of her ladies? There is no opportunity for profit, no chance to acquire influence. The investment would be a total loss. Now, you, you must believe me. Are you positive? Nicole, my darling, I have spent my life as an officer in the army. If I know nothing else, I understand politics and intrigue. Marie Therese's day is over in the court of France, and her son has set. And we have saved 500 livres. I suppose you're right. Darling, I'm always right. Well, let me have the money. Mm, the money? Well, it's mine, isn't it? Well, certainly, of course. But you see... Now, look here, Jean. Darling, we agreed we would invest that money in our future. As it turned out, it would not have been wise to buy you the post as lady-in-waiting. And so, I made another investment. You see? Spent my 500 livres. It was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Without consulting me. There was no time. It had to be done on the spot. And what did you buy? A regiment. A regiment? A newly created regiment. The king's own loyal foot. No commanding officer had yet been assigned. And I can assure you the bidding was brisk. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time... With the right amount of money. A regiment? You always wanted a regiment. You planned it this way. You fooled me. Darling, this is the truest, surest way to preferment. I am the best colonel in the army. This regiment will cover us all with glory. I shall be made a Marichal of France. You fooled me. I did it for us. We shall become rich, powerful, famous. You lied to me. Darling... Come to the arms of the husband who adores you. It isn't the first time. I was away from you for so long, my angel. I promise you, it will surely be the last. I love you more than life itself. You are more beautiful than any of the women at court. N no, d d don't touch me. How can I help it, my beloved? Jean, please. Oh, later, Marie, later... We'll have the wine after a while. Colonel Martinet, come forward. Sire, this is a regiment? Yes, Your Majesty. Oh, makes me ill even to look. This disorderly mob of horses, baggage, equipment. This is supposed to be the king's own loyal foot. A most scruffy-looking rabble, Martinet, would you agree? Without doubt, sire. Landless peasants plucked up from the countryside or dregs of the gutter scoured from the streets of the cities and impressed into service. You, you still tell me you can turn them into soldiers? Yes, Your Majesty. Into the finest soldiers in the world. I am tempted to say, Colonel, that you're mad. If I may be so bold, sire, your professional soldier of fortune with his own arms and equipment serves his own purpose. He enlists only for the chance of loot. He questions the orders of his superiors when he considers that they shall endanger him unnecessarily. And this has always been the curse of the Fleurance Army, Colonel? That, sire, is why I propose to create a new kind of army. An army of men who are trained to obey without question. Oh, this has been tried before. One can compel men to obey by shooting them. But then one only has created an army of corpses. There is another way, sire. I beg your leave to try it. I shall transform these men into the smartest and most effective regiment in the French armed forces. These men? <laughs> these scruffy villains I see before? Yes, Your Majesty. Uh, that one. Uh, the tall, thin one. See him? Uh, lounging under a tree. Mark him? Yes, Your Majesty. You'll make him into a soldier? He shall become the pride of the regiment. Sergeant? Ride forward and fetch me that 
sorry looking oaf. Your name, Swine? My name is Etienne. Etienne, is it? Your Majesty, he shall be our benchmark from this dirt, from this miserable clay, we shall mold the most magnificent soldier in the army of France. Do you think so? Would you say it can be done? Can even the redoubtable Colonel Martinet make a soldier out of Etienne? Well, we've done what we had to do in the first act. We've stated the problem and brought all of our people together. Now... In just a few minutes, we shall all be ready for Act Two. According to the time-honored army ballad, Old Soldiers Never Die, that may be true enough. However, young soldiers certainly do. But that's the way of the world. In our story about soldiers... We don't happen to have any old ones, but we do have a middle-aged commanding officer and a rather young recruit. Stand at attention. Are you deaf? Sergeant, a box across the ears to improve his hearing. (coughs) Now then, pig, stand at attention. Or shall the sergeant remind you once again? My my, my lord, I, I would gladly stand at attention if I only knew what that was. If only you knew what that was. Dear sweet lord in heaven, for what sins am I being punished? <laughs> well, Martinet, from this clay shall you mold the finest soldier in the army of France. Your Majesty, I take my oath. This, this human refuse that stands before you now... Uh, what is your name again? Etienne, my lord, if it pleases you. It does not please me. Nothing about you pleases me. But within six months, that's all I ask of your majesty. Six months. Ah, oh, well, Martinet, you've always been a brave and loyal officer. You richly deserve a chance to fail. You shall have your six months. Gentlemen, let us retire and leave Colonel Martinet to his task. (laughs) Did I say task? The twelve labors of Hercules were child's play compared to this. Good day to you, Colonel. Place this one in a special company. Yes, sir. This special company shall be drilled by me personally. Understood? Yes, sir. All officers of the regiment are to be present to observe my special methods and apply them faithfully to their own units. Yes, sir. And you. Oh, what is your name again? Etienne, my lord. Yes, yes, yes. Why did the king's eye have to fall on you? Of all the 700 men in the regiment, why did he have to pick on you? <laughs> Attention. Pull yourselves up. Heads up. Chests out. You there, uh, ATN. I, I, I'm, I'm trying. Oh, Sergeant. <laughs> Keep your mouth shut. Present arms. Come on now, that's a musket, not a snake. Hold it steady. Steady. But it's heavy. Sergeant. <laughs> You'll learn. After a while... Etienne, you must eat something. I'm not hungry. But you haven't eaten all day. You must be hungry. Yes, I'm hungry, but... I'm too tired. I just want to sleep. The sergeant's wife and I, and two of the other women, we found a chicken. Found... We each took a quarter. I need a little soup. Here, Etienne. Etienne! He's asleep. He is so tired. Uh, no rest for the weary of this world. Up, up now. Uh, 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 up, up, you're on guard. Guard? Guard? Come, I'll take you to your post. But I... Uh, up! Put on your coat. Pick up your musket. Stand at attention. Forward. Guard! Guard! 
Rod, halt. Now, this is your post. We challenge all who approach. You say, halt, who goes there? Give the password. The password? Yes. Tonight's password is Versailles. Remember, Versailles. Versailles. And if they try to go by without giving the password, you must shoot. Shoot? On the spot. Oh, no, no. I, I, I couldn't kill anybody. You'll obey your orders, you understand? Mm. What's this? You've fallen asleep? Uh, what, what? If you fall asleep on guard duty, you will be shot. You understand? Shot. Yes. Yes. I understand. Guard post, Sergeant. Uh, just over the rise, Your Honor. Yes, I see. But where is the sentry? Have you neglected to post one? No, Colonel. I. Re- oh, I remember. Yes, I see. There, on the ground. That man is asleep. Yes, Colonel. I believe he is. Wake him up. On your feet. You were asleep on duty. I, 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 I was so tired. Tomorrow morning, you will be shot in front of the entire regiment. Me? As a lesson. Uh, Colonel. Yes, Sergeant. Uh, with the Colonel's permission, uh, maybe we'd better not shoot him. Nonsense, Sergeant. He will serve us as an example. But the king himself said if we have to shoot to get them to obey, you will have an army of corpses. Some shooting is very much in order. It might be inconvenient to shoot this one. Look at him closely. Why? Oh, it's... Yes, uh, it's the one you said would be the benchmark to the standard to which all the rest could be compared. Yes. Very well. You're a fortunate soldier. I personally will supervise your training from now on. Soldier. Sir? Why didn't you challenge me? Challenge you, sir? When you see someone coming... What are your orders? Well, I'm to say, halt, who goes there and ask for the password? Well, why didn't you? Well, sir, I know who's going there. It is yourself. Oh, that doesn't matter. Whoever it is that approaches, you're to call who goes there and demand the password. Is that understood? But, sir, if I know who goes there... When you are on guard, you don't know anyone who cannot give the password. Understand? But anyone who cannot give the password is to be shot. For punishment, you shall not be relieved at midnight, but shall spend the rest of the night here on guard. Stand at attention. Forward! March! Company! Halt! Oh. Who is that man in the rear ranks? Oh, I should have known. Sergeant, mark him for extra punishment. Fix bayonets. On guard. Now, lunge. Withdraw. You have the bullet and the bayonet. If you cannot get your man with lead, you must get him with steel. Now, that's the enemy in front of you. Kill him. Lunge. Who's the man that fell down? It's uh, ATM, sir. He's fainted. Throw a bucket of water over him. You work hard, so hard. Oh, it's even worse than the farm. Yes, much worse. But at least we have enough to eat. I just want to sleep. Oh, Etienne, listen to me. This could be a better life than the one on the farm. And things would be so... 
so much easier for you if only... If only? The sergeant's wife was talking to me about it. Really, a tin. The sergeant is a good fellow. He's only doing his duty. His wife told me things would be so much easier for you if only you would try to be a good soldier. Oh, I just want to go to sleep. No, no, Etienne. This is something you must think about. I've done nothing but think about it, and I don't want to be a good soldier. I don't want to be a bad soldier either. I just don't want to be a soldier. But we have nothing to say about it. As a soldier, sooner or later, I will have to kill somebody. Well, Etienne... Yes? What were you going to say? <laughs> what can you say? What's the only purpose of an army? To kill people, that's all. Why do I want to kill some fellow I don't know? Even if I knew him, I wouldn't want to kill him. Even if he injured me, I wouldn't want to kill him. I can't kill anyone. That, 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 that's all there is to it. It is the will of the Lord. Oh, how can you say that? I learned it from you. I never taught you that. But you did? When I would complain about our hard lot, you would constantly preach to me, we must accept the position in life where God has placed us. For reasons that we cannot understand, he has made you a soldier. You must therefore submit to your fate. Ready? Aim. Fire! Fire! in left hand. Right hand removes cartridge from bandolier. Bite open the top. Pour powder down the barrel, followed by ball, wadding it down with... What is it, Sergeant? Uh, one moment, sir. I don't believe Etienne fired the last volley. Oh, the fool! Is he going to double shot the musket? Bring him forward to me. This musket has not been fired. Is something wrong with it, soldier? No, sir. Why didn't you fire? I cannot fire. You cannot fire. Will you be good enough to explain why? Because the thought... The, the idea of killing makes me sick. Oh. We will make you even sicker. Sergeant, this man is to be given ten lashes for disobeying a firing order. Next time he disobeys... Make it 11, and so on. Assuming there will be a so on, which I am inclined to doubt. Oh. Hold still. Oh. I made a poultice from these leaves. It is supposed to be very good. The sergeant's wife told me about it. Uh, oh. Mm. oh. Is it better? Uh. I, I, I think so. Oh. Now, lie quietly. Just let me do the talking. If him, you simply will have to obey orders. You will have to become a soldier. I, I can't. Oh, please. Do it of your own free will. No. Then they'll break you, and that will be worse. I just want to go to sleep. You can't escape by going to sleep. The sun will rise tomorrow morning... And you will have to wake up. Ah, Colonel Martinet, Your Majesty. My spies tell me your men seem to be shaping up well. Uncommonly well. I thank Your Majesty. Uh, tell me, what are your methods? Sire, I take a recruit, one who has absolutely no desire to serve as a soldier. <laughs> Indeed, why should he? Food is bad, discipline severe. He can only look forward to death or disease. And slowly, I replace his will with mine. Yes. There is some corporal punishment, yes. But mostly it is repetition. Repetition. I drum it into his head. I drill it into his brain. Soon he is no longer a man, but a machine. My machine. Ever ready to do my bidding. Hmm. Um, by the way, the one who you said would be the benchmark of your progress? Oh, that one. 
Sire, I will make him into a soldier if it kills me. Is this a prophetic line? Who knows? We have evidently set up two adversaries. On the face of it, they seem to be so unevenly matched. Colonel Martinet has the force, the power of the mighty kingdom of France on his side, while poor Etienne, he has what? The human spirit? My heart is with Etienne, but if I were a betting man, my money would be on, well, why not wait just a few minutes for Act Three? He has the force, the power of the mighty kingdom of France on his side, while poor Etienne, he has what? The human spirit? My heart is with Etienne, but if I were a betting man, my money would be on, well, why not wait just a few minutes for Act Three? Soldiers are dreamers, said an English poet. And the soldier in our story would seem to bear him out. Certainly, our man Etienne would rather dream than drill. He doesn't seem to be a very teachable recruit. But victorious armies have been hammered out of raw material that seemed even less promising. Sentry. Yes, sir? Oh, it's you. I should have known. Who else? You didn't challenge me. Why? Because I know you, sir. Your orders are to challenge all who approach and to demand the password. Oh, yes, sir, but how can I say who goes there when I know who goes there? How, how can I ask you for the password when you're the one who made it up? Evidently, you have not yet learned your lesson. Hold still. I'll put... Oh, no, no. Oh. Sir, if you write... Want to be a soldier? But I want you to be a soldier. You, you, you want me to be a soldier? Why? Because it is your fate, and you cannot fight it any longer. Oh, we should at least try to get a little bit of enjoyment out of life. We, you and I, we should be like everyone else in the camp. You want me to be like everyone else? You want me to get roaring drunk and, and, and beat you just like the other soldiers beat their wives? If it will make our lives easier. I, 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 I am tired. And my back hurts. And I... I just want to go to sleep. Colonel Martinet, Your Majesty. Uh, they look well on the drill field, your men do, but uh, of course that's only a part of it. I agree, Your Majesty. Uh, we're having a war in Germany at present. Yes, Your Majesty. A rather small war as these things go. I'm aware of it, sire. Neither we nor they seem to be taking it very seriously. I know that. It would appear to be an excellent place for bloody new regiments. Do you agree? Completely. You will, therefore, prepare to attack the town of duisburg hamborn in the Rhine province. I thank your majesty for the opportunity at the end of the week. It'll be done. Oh, by the way, that soldier, the benchmark, uh, how's he progressing? Uh, slowly, sire. Slowly, but surely. <laughs> Keep in line. My, my wife. Well, where's my wife? Well, now, where do you suppose she is? At the end of the column where the other camp followers are, where she belongs. Will she be all right? She'd be better off back there than up here. Where are we going? Germany. Well, what's Germany? It's another country. Where is it? Oh, I guess it's east of here. Who lives there? Well, who do you think lives there? Germans. Oh, what kind of people are they? Have you ever seen any? Oh, I should think I have. I've walked there before. Well, then what are they like? They're like everybody else, I suppose. Except for one thing. What's that? They don't speak French. French? This language we speak in our country, France. It's called French. Well, what do they speak? 
Well, now, I would imagine they speak German. Oh. Um, why are we going to Germany? Because those are our orders. Well, what are we going to do there? We're going to kill some of them. And they're going to kill some of us. But why? Why? Because that's the way it is. And then what's going to happen? Then we'll go back home. Those of us who are still alive. Um, um, Sergeant. What? What are we going to do? I told you. We're going to fight. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, how does that work? We'll come up to the field of battle. The field of battle? Mm, It's always fought on the big field. They'll be there, waiting. Then we'll fire at them. They'll fire at us. And whoever has the most men left alive wins. Wins what? The day. Oh. Um... Sergeant, yes. if we, the, the Germans and us, if we stand there facing each other and they point their muskets at us, they they, they will, won't they? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Depend on it. Yes. Sergeant, how, how can we just stand there knowing people are pointing guns at us and, and we can get killed? How, how can we just stand there? Oh, you stand there, my boy. Depend on it. You, you mean... You'll be able to look at the muzzle of a gun that's pointing at you, knowing that death is in there, and it's, it's, it's coming for you, and, and, and you'll just stand there? Yes, you will. And you want to know why? Because it's been drilled into you, beaten into you, to obey orders. Obey without question, without hesitation. Obey! And when you're told to stand steady, you'll stand steady. And when you're told to fire, you'll fire. Oh, I'll never be able to fire. I I can never kill another human being. You'll do as you're told. Whether you like it or not, you have become a soldier. Officers, form the regimental front. That's the enemy in front of us. The enemy. Yes, it's the enemy. Stand steady. Steady in the line. Ready. Aim. Fire. See, my boy, what did I tell you? You stood steady. And on the command, you let loose along with everybody else. Sergeant. I saw men go down that they were hit. I must have killed one of them. Of course you did. I, I, I killed a man, do you understand? Right. Reload and kill some more. You're a soldier now. forever. No, no. No longer matters what I do. I've murdered my brother. There's the mark of Cain on my forehead. It's him. Listen to me. What are you standing there whining and sniffling for? Aren't you supposed to have something prepared for me to eat? Oh, my own. Just move it. Oh. That's only a taste of what you'll get if I have any more trouble with you. And you find me something to drink. Do you hear? Sir? It looks as if we're in for a long siege. Yes, sir. It should be quiet here for a bit, don't you think? It looks that way. I'm going back into France. I have an important mission. Yes, sir. I shall return sometime late tomorrow night. Make sure there is no slackening of discipline among the men. You can rely on me, sir. <laughs> You. 
Nicole, is that a way to greet a loving husband? What do you want this time? I want a smile, my darling. A kiss. And afterward, you will want some money. Oh, Nicole, is that fair? It's true. You married me for my money. Well, how much this time? Oh, Nicole, my men have fought valiantly in front of Duisburg. I can have not only the finest looking unit in the army, I can have the best fighting regiment as well. Oh, please. No, this is all part of it. Don't you see? The king is watching us closely, carefully. I will be promoted. And then we shall become people of importance. People of influence. I don't care anymore. There is a new musket. Well, it's the same as the old one, except it has a new lock. Oh, please, please. A flint lock. Now, let me explain. I am not interested. At present, we are armed with wheel locks. Now, for these, you need a key to wind up the spring. I said I was not interested. It's almost impossible to get off more than one round per minute. Whereas with not the new... Not one sou. Whereas with a flint lock... You can get off two and perhaps even three. Oh, go back to your precious army. Oh, Nicole, Nicole, please, don't send me away. I only need 2,000 livres. 2,000? Don't deny me, my darling. I love you. I adore you. No, no, don't touch me. I can't help it, my darling. Please, Jean. Oh, I love you. No, Jean, you, you mustn't. You, you, you shouldn't. Oh, Jean. Hey, Jean. Have a drink, Sergeant. No drinking. We're going on guard duty. Guard duty? Oh, why not? Pick up your musket. Let's go. Guard duty. Yes, sir, I'm the best guard in the French Army. You know something, Sergeant? I'm the best soldier in the French Army. I hope you're not drunk. No, Sergeant, I can't get drunk anymore. <laughs> can you? Well, I can never get drunk enough to forget the eyes of the men I've killed. God, halt. What are your general orders, Sentry? To obey all the rules, regulations, and orders of the King's own loyal foot regiment. And what are your special orders? To stand guard over this post, to challenge all who approach, regardless of rank or standing, to bar all who cannot give the password, to fire without hesitation or question at all who seek to approach this post improperly. Very good. Your commanding officer, Colonel Martinet. Give the password. The password? The password. Soldier, I have just returned from France. I don't know the password for tonight. Now, allow me to go by. The password. You fool. Can't you see I'm Colonel Martinet? The password. But you know me. You know who I am. My special orders are to bar all who cannot give the password. I am your colonel. Regardless of rank or standing. I order you to let me pass. To fire without hesitation at all who approach improperly. Stand aside, fool. I'll have you flogged. The password. I said stand aside. I'll ride you down. Oh, oh. <laughs> It's you. Yes, you. I said I would make you into a soldier. Even if it would kill me. And it did. Is this a true story? Well, we do know that Lieutenant Colonel Jean Martinet, whose name has become synonymous with the strict drill master, was killed by one of his own men before the town of Duisburg. And we also know how dangerous it is to try to alter the psyche of another human being. And there's something else you might like to know about all this. I'll tell you shortly. Almost 
an hour ago, I told you about some people whose names survived, although they themselves have been forgotten. I happen to mention Lord Cardigan, who gave his name to a sweater. I should also list Lord Raglan, who gave his name to a sleeve. Since our story has dealt with soldiers, by an odd coincidence, both Lords Cardigan and Raglan were generals in the British Army.